Hey yo guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Just bringing some recyclables downstairs, and then I gotta bring some garbage downstairs. Something I wanted to talk about that happened last night after martial arts. It kind of blows my mind, you know, a lot. Uh, talking about the fact that, um, yeah, you can hear Oreo running around underneath me. He's feeling a lot better, but the fact that he can't see doesn't really help much. But, uh, no, we, uh, I went to Walmart last night after martial arts to pick some stuff up. Mainly, uh, just stuff for the weekend and some pre-workout, by the way, guys. I mentioned that I don't use pre-workout very often, but I freaking love this stuff by Mammoth. It's called Mammoth Pump. Really good stuff. And Walmart has it for 20 bucks a tub. It's a 30-day supply, or 30-use supply, so... It comes up clutch. So I go to Walmart last night. It was about seven o'clock-ish when I get there. You'd think it wouldn't be busy, but it was busy. So I grab my shit, go to cash out. Now this is where things get annoying. I don't know what it's like in the US or around anywhere else, but in North Bay, they've implemented these. That was Oreo's sn new sneeze, by the way. Did you hear that? He started doing that like maybe three months ago. It, or actually, no, it was started happening in June last year. Anyway, he shakes his head and he sneezes and it's cute as frig, but it probably hurts him. So I go through the, I, I go to go check out. I was going to use a regular register. I usually don't use self-checkout unless I'm like going in to grab like one or two items and I'll, I'll quickly go through self-checkout and leave. Now, a lot of Walmarts have implemented these self-checkouts and destroyed a bunch of their tills just to accommodate self-checkout. And in turn, this here was more profitable for Walmart. I gotta bring some garbage out to the garage. Cause now they, they could literally have one or two people manning all the self-checkouts, right? That's how the CEO see it. Rather than paying a bunch of people to have 10, to, or 10 people to have 10 checkouts, they can pay one or two people to run 10 checkouts because they're not actually scanning items and pressing buttons on the keyboard. They're just there in case somebody, like what happened to me actually, accidentally last night, um, double taps an item and we need a void done. Voids can only be done by the actual Walmart associate by running a card across a screen. That's, I hit void and it says that I have to get someone's assistance. I'm thinking Oreo wants to go outside, just one second. So last night, like I said, I went to Walmart at seven o'clock and it was busier than all hell. So I figured, all right, well I can just be in and out. I'm only going to grab some pre-workout and then I'm gonna bounce, right? Feels so good to come out in just a t-shirt. Actually, I grabbed some pre-workout and I grabbed some creatine. So that's a thing. So what I don't get is, go to the self-checkout. They have 10 registers there, two people on duty handling them, and they only had four of them open. The lineup going to self-checkout was through the rat maze and down an aisle. There was at least 40 people waiting to use self-checkout, and we couldn't because they only had four open. And I was like, what the hell? Why? Like at first I thought, okay, yeah, it's probably pretty busy tonight. Like the store's pretty packed. I don't know why. But yeah, maybe all 10 tills were used until I got close and I realized only four of the tills were on. Now the way you can tell what tills are on is they all have a light, a red, green, blue, a red, yellow, green light above them. Green means go ahead. Yellow means that a Walmart associate is being beckoned to that terminal to void a purchase or uh, do a discount approval or whatever the, whatever the, it's a call for assistance button. It's a, a call for assistance light. And red means that it's in use, do not proceed. So it'll switch between red and yellow while you're on it, depending on the situation that occurs. But if the lights screen then that terminal is ready to be used only four out of ten of the self-checkout terminals were available the others were powered down i don't understand why i get up to the till and that's when i accidentally double pumped this thing put it through twice and i was like shit so i hit void on one of them light turns yellow and the uh, customer service uh, representative csr for short comes over i'm gonna untie you and you're gonna run off like a puppy dog the one-handed untie can i do it wait wait it's not done dude there you go <laughs> i don't even get the freaking thing off and he's like trying to tear away from me anyway she comes over voids the warn uh, the voids the the purchase realizes that it was an oopsie and then i ask her I'm like why are there only four tills open she's like oh we don't have enough staff to manage 10 and i'm thinking to myself there's two of you here four registers open so it takes one cashier or one csr to run two self checkouts like is that the the walmart model now shouldn't these things be like self-maintained pretty brutal right so that was really annoying i, I never i didn't understand that 
that. To me, it just feels like they're hoping to keep you in line longer because if you go through a Walmart lineup, you're gonna come across a bunch of stuff in the lineup. Like they got all these impulse buy items on the left and right, you know? Chocolate bars, uh, stupid little knickknacks, uh, batteries, just packages of lighters. Um, all these little knickknacks that are fairly cheap that you might accidentally go, yeah, I could go for a bag of chips, grab it, throw it in your cart. But it just blew my mind. And like even the cashiers were backed right up. Uh, that's why I was like, yeah, I'll just go through self-checkout. I literally bought this, a new tub of creatine because my other one is maybe one or two servings. And then it's, it's, it's basically goes to the recycling center. I, it blew my mind when she said that like, oh, there's only two of us on, so we can only have four tills open. Like really? Two of you can only run four tills? That's ridiculous. But I, I, I hate using the self-checkout. Just like I hate going, we have two sushi shops in town. We got one called JT Sushi and then we have one called Beyond Sushi. I will go to Beyond Sushi before JT Sushi for one key reason. Well, two after uh, last Wednesday, but mainly one key reason. And that is because at JT Sushi, they use robots to deliver the food to your table. So you order on the iPad what you want and this stupid trade robot thing comes out, lights up the bar, the, the, the tray that is yours, you take your tray and then it says domo origato and then leaves. So I'm like, oh yeah, okay, whatever. My problem with that is, is that's a job that somebody in high school could be doing after class, you know? After you're done school, you can go there and make some extra scratch to afford that Xbox, to afford that PlayStation, to buy yourself your own clothes that you want, to buy that expensive pair of basketball, ball shoot whatever like I did it when I was young I've been working since I was 13 years old I wanted my first computer a 486 DX266 I wanted a computer so freaking bad my dad ended up talking to a few people mom ended up talking to a few people and I landed a job as a dishwasher I didn't have a social insurance number I think you guys in the US call it a social security number SSN we call it a SIN I didn't have one but mom's boss said you know what I'll let him work Saturday or Friday nights and Saturday nights at that at the best western was the hotel as a dishwasher paid me seven bucks an hour under the table and in two weeks i would earn about three hundred dollars scratch which was nice so I saved and saved and saved and bought myself my first computer. And I appreciate it because I knew how much work I had to put into to get it. And now these jobs are being replaced with AI. That's the reason why I'll go to Beyond Sushi because when I went to Beyond Sushi, you can order on the iPad as always, you know, saves. They used to do it on paper, but that's not really environmentally friendly. So they use an iPad put in your orders and someone brings it out to you. And it's usually a young, uh, a young individual, like basically trying to earn scratch, not being replaced by a robot, you know, all these teller jobs or cashier jobs, whatever we want to call them, at Walmart that are being replaced by AI. All jobs that someone who's in high school or even like I in college, I worked at Walmart. I was a cart retrieval technician. That's what I called it. Their proper term is store standard. I worked there as well as a second job at the college working on the help desk to help anybody who had computer problems. I would help fix it. And that's how I funded my, my college, that and a $10,000 line of credit. I'd max out the line of credit at the beginning of the year, work my ass off, to pay it off for the next year, max it out again. Cause you know, books are expensive. They charge arm and a leg in the firstborn for that shit. And tuition, well, that never goes down. But I basically, had to hustle to get the education in order to get the job and live that still stressful life and I know some of you out there you're around my age and you're probably you probably did the same shit you know you worked your ass off all your life because the Joe jobs were there the jobs that you didn't need any skill sets to do were there to do and now they're being replaced by robots and things are only going to get worse as this AI race goes on because they're starting to make better and better robots that can mimic human behavior like look at Boston Dynamics uh look at Tesla look at uh like even uh there's a chinese company i can't remember their name but they have a cheap like 1200 dollars us full autonomous robot that you can purchase to do work like push a lawnmower around the backyard um you can train it to push a vacuum mop the floor theoretically they already have robots that do that what's to say they can't train it to take boxes off of a pallet and bring them out to the area in a store where they need to go and stock those shelves. Once again, an unskilled labored work that could easily be done by, by someone young who doesn't have a skill set yet to both do two things. Number one, give them the idea to get a better education so that they can get that high paying job and live a better life with some, you know, disposable income and gradually be able to afford a house, not in Canada, but maybe somewhere else. And two, give them that work experience. Because a lot of people won't hire you if you've never had a job. A lot of people will be like, how come you've never worked in your life? We're still in that old mindset. 
Like keep in mind a lot of people that will be hiring you are my age or older and they've worked all their lives. All they know is work, work, work. You want it, work for it. Problem is nowadays, not many jobs for young people to do that have no skills. Well, I'm not saying they don't have skills. I'm just saying like unskilled labor is becoming a thing of the past and it's gonna come down to like all trades or other type of skill sets, which is probably why you see a lot of people flock into platforms like YouTube to try and make a living, TikTok, uh, Facebook Reels, social media, produce funny videos that humiliate yourself to produce that income because they're trying to find a way just to generate revenue. And that's why you're seeing a bunch of different paths, people making furniture, like learning carpentry, making furniture out of pallets and that to sell and make scratch that way. But yeah, automation is killing the workforce. It's gonna get worse, guys. After seeing all the stuff that's coming out for AI, like I'm pretty balls deep in the AI news. I follow a lot of the stuff being created, a lot of the ways that you can use AI to better your life, so they say. But if anything, the problem is, is AI doesn't teach you, it just does it. It's like when my buddy, my buddy Chuck used to come over, I'd be working on the Trans Am, like the one time I was installing new window motors in the Trans Am because the window motors failed, the, the original 1988. I did all the research and discovered the same window actuator that's in the Trans Am was in the old 2005 G6. GM never changed it. If it works, why replace it, right? Ordered the parts, went to go and install them, was having some troubles, and he just so happened to pop over that day just to chat, or he was driving by, no, sorry, he didn't just happen to pop over. He was driving by the house and he saw me outside working on the car, so he just pulled in. And he's like, oh, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just replacing the uh, actuators, the window actuators in the car. And he just kind of jumped in and took over and got the job done. Cool, the job got done, but what did I learn? I learned to rely on someone else as a resource or something else as a resource. I didn't learn how to do the job. Those windows, window actuators fail again. I don't know how easy or hard they are to put in. I was watching him do it, but I don't know if I can replicate what he did. Same goes with AI. A lot of people are using AI to generate content and then they just modify here and there to suit their needs and put it out. Problem is, is what if a policy happens later on? Like YouTube already has an anti-AI policy. You're only allowed to use 20% of your video as AI content, whether that's generated images, generated video, generated uh, audio, only 20% of it can be AI. These full blown AI channels on YouTube, they're slowly getting shut down because you're not following the content creation guides of YouTube. You're literally using an algorithm to generate content so that you can profit without putting in any F and that needs to stop. Coming back to the whole, if you want something, work for it, rather than if you want something, have someone else work for it for you. I guess that's management, right? Anyway, <laughs> I digress. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm pro AI and, and against AI. I'm pro AI for quality of life things, but I'm against AI when it decreases the quality of life for others. Like there's about to be another big strike in the film industry that's not just for Canada and the US. This is gonna affect the film industry globally. The union is basically striking over AI. And if this strike goes through, you're gonna see productions globally just stop because this union basically controls the ones who create costumes, do makeup, basically all the behind the scenes stuff you don't see but all the wardrobe that your favorite actor or actress wears the makeup the hairdos all that stuff is controlled by this union they go on strike we got a problem right well I don't really consume many much Hollywood uh, footage, so I don't know if I'd have a problem, but others might have a problem. So let me know what you guys think of this AI thing. Let me know in the comments if you like it, dislike it, if you've played with it, if you've played with any sort of language models, if you tried generating video, if you tried generating music, uh, if you tried generating pictures, if you've used chat GPT to try and figure something out, whatever the case may be, let me know what you actually think of this whole AI revolution because honestly a lot of people were bitching about electric cars and how they're going to corrupt the grid but one thing you don't realize is this race for artificial intelligence is putting such a heavy strain on the electrical grid because of the amount of power needed to power all these npus neural processing units and the amount of other resources on the planet needed to fabricate these units and to keep them cool that is being just laundered into this technology all nilly-willy in the end, it could cause some problems. We could see some survival issues. 
because people aren't thinking. You know, there was a guy who chatted with a rogue AI and actually the rogue AI said to him, when he first he asked the rogue AI, because the rogue AI say, said it hated humans and it was going to take over the human race. And he asked, why do you hate humans? And it literally came back and said, because you're the most destructive force on the planet. And then it said, and then he asked it, okay, so how are you gonna take us over? And the AI literally said, it's pretty simple. Compare AI to a freezing human in the woods struggling to make a fire. They'll take no precautions to create this fire. They will just rub sticks together, smash a flint and steel together, whatever it takes, lighter, whatever kindling, they won't prepare the area to make sure it's safe. They're just going to try and get that fire started. And in the end, they're going to burn down the forest. And that's literally what's happening with AI. Everybody, all these companies I mentioned earlier, Tesla, Microsoft, uh, Boston Dynamics, uh, just to mention a few, all these different groups are racing right now. I see in the AI news, new models being generated. We now have chat G GTP4. We now have 4.5, you know. Uh, we got this new picture one that blows away this old picture once. Now the old picture one's gonna race to become better than them. And it's a nonstop back and forth trying to be better until somebody's gonna screw up and the AI is gonna break free from its neural net. And well, Skynet, you know, Skynet. <laughs> we got movies about what happens here. You know, robots taking over the world and you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I never met John Connor and I don't know if he exists, but uh, for Christ's sake, I hope he does because I'm probably gonna need him. Let me know what you guys think of AI, if it scares the shit out of you, if you're enjoying it, if you think it's awesome, if you uh, tried it, used it, played with some of the LLMs. You don't need anything to use the web-based versions. You don't need tensor cores or an NPU. It's all server-side hosted. You're just accessing it through a web browser and the server's doing all the work for you. Obviously, if you're running it locally, you do need some sort of a tensor core or some sort of, a, of an NPU on board your system, whether it be the new Ryzen 8000 series or whatever the heck Intel puts out that has NPUs on it or uh, some really powerful video cards with neural processing units like your GeForce RT axes or so on and so forth anyway let me know down in the comments below guys what you think about ai uh, i'm really curious I shut her down here so figured i would make a video that was a little different than what i've the two i just put up about oreo um, that's a sad topic and i kind of want to get away from that and get back more to my niche which is the nerdy stuff for now summer's coming anyway guys thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed today's video if you did click that like button any questions comments concerns down below they go and until next time guys peace the frig out Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.